Today in the Big Bang, make this completely daft cable car game out of string and yoghurt pots. Why a cart full of cabbages led to the invention of television. And make these fantastic photos without a camera. Welcome to the Big Bang. Here's a puzzle for you. Can you move some juice into a bowl? Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, picking without up... Without touching the glass or the bowl or moving it, and you can use this napkin. OK, that's slightly more difficult, <laughs> but I reckon if I wrap the napkin around nah, the glass... Now, you can't and then... touch it or move it, remember. Uh, in that case, I'm going to have to think about this. You have a think about it as well, and I'll tell you the solution at the end of the show. To catch a fly, most spiders build a web. Not Commando Spider, he builds a cable car. Go on, V, go on, a bit further, a bit further. Go yes. on, <laughs> hey, go on, go on, can you? Another fly for my larder. Well done, come on again. Yeah, OK. So. If you want to make a Commando Spider cable car game, I'll show you how to make one. The cable car is just a couple of these yoghurt pots that come in two sections. Cut the corner off the bigger section on both pots, then get a paper clip and bend it like that. And you see, when the cable car's the right way up, this is the hook that the spider hangs from. Now stick the other yoghurt pot on top and you'll have something like that. You just need two more paper clips. One bent out so you've got a hook going that away and the other with a hook going this away. Now all you've got to do is decorate it. Now, paint doesn't work very well, so I've used bits of coloured tape, and black works really well for windows. To string up your cable car, you'll need two bits of rough string. Rough string's good, because it should provide enough friction to keep the cable car where it is. The string should pass either side of the yoghurt pots and through that guide at the front, and at the end, it should be tied off to something. Now, if you want to move the cable car, you'll need another type of string. Kite line is best, it's really smooth. Tie that to the guide at the front, up it goes to a loop, back the way down, through a loop, and then, when you pull this line, the cable car will move up. But you can't move the cable car down. Not yet. And that's where Commando Spider comes in. His body is a couple of fridge magnets. They're not very strong, so stack one on top of the other. Get a pipe cleaner and stick them round the magnets and shape them for the spider's legs. Then dab on some paint for eyes and use a little bit of paper clip stuck in the middle of the body for a hook. Commando Spider's abseil rope is more kite line. It's passed through a hook inside and a hole at the back. Now, the weight of the magnet means that if you just relax that line, he will slide down really nicely. And then when you want to pull him up, you pull the line. And when it gets to the top, because it can't go any further, you can now pull the cable car down using the same line that Commando Spider goes up and down on. Crafty. The fly's wings are just made of clear plastic, but the fly's bodies are made of paper clips. So when the magnet spider gets near them, they'll stick to him. Here's the game. There are four spider's webs lined up directly underneath the cable car line. The thing is, it's the juicier flies that are on the furthest away web. And the further away the web, the more difficult it is to line up your cable car so Commander Spider can pick them up. Go on, V, you can do it. And the person who gets the most flies is the winner. Oh, well done. That's good, isn't it? Oh, that's very good. Now get it back without dropping it. No problem. Uh... Did you get it? Drop it! Ah, oh, you dropped it! I said you would! Go on, have another go. Take some sunshine and a shower of rain and you've got ideal conditions for a beautiful rainbow. 
Here are two things about rainbows. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? From the ground, a rainbow looks like a semicircle. But rainbows are really complete circles. It's just that the bottom half is hidden below the horizon. If you see a rainbow from an aeroplane, you can see the complete circle. Fact or fib? If you stare very hard at a rainbow, you can see two extra colours. They're called mandigo and saftan, and they appear in the gap between orange and yellow. So, which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, rainbows really are circular, so the big fibber is Cynthia. There are no new colours called saftan and mandigo. <laughs> in fact, no one knows how many colours there are in the rainbow because you can't see where one colour stops and the next one starts. But if you stare really hard, you can sometimes see a second rainbow appear just above the first one, with the colours going in the opposite direction. Are you ready? Go! Go. Wow! Oh, I like yours! That is mm. magic, isn't wow. it? We've made these um, slightly secret and somewhat special photographs. Only our best friends are allowed to see them. Oh, go on then. <laughs> Voila! I'll bet you've never seen a picture like this before. It looks more like a painting than a photograph. They weren't made using cameras, but they were made using photographic paper, which is quite cheap and you can get from camera shops. Ask for the black and white print kind. Now, the thing about photographic paper is that it's coated in chemicals. When the light shines on the chemicals, they react and something wonderful happens. But that means you have to make sure you've got everything ready before you take the paper out of the pack. Now, next, you'll need different thicknesses of paper. Any kind, card, brown paper, nice thin baking paper, and cut it into shapes to make your design. Now, I've got all my shapes ready so I can take the paper out of the pack. Black bag to keep the light out. Right, seal it up. Do your design on the shiny side, then put it in place. That's the sea, the land. When you've done your design, you're going to have to put it out of the reach of people because they might knock it. So find a windowsill or something where you can leave it in the light. There. Just leave that about an hour. My photograph is almost ready. And you can see how the sunlight has actually changed the colour of the photographic paper. And the different thicknesses of paper have created different shadows. The thick paper gives you a thick shadow, but the light sort of transparent see-through paper gives you a really light shadow effect. Now, your photograph will continue to change colour. So here's a good couple of tips. When it's done, dunk it in fresh water. This will help protect it a little, but it's still not quite enough. So you need to make a protective frame for your photo. I've made one here out of a bit of card folded back on itself with a couple of bits of ribbons to tie it tight to stop any light from getting in. And on the back, for a little bit of card, I've made a stand so I can display my fantastic ghostly photograph very proudly. The photo in this frame is slightly different. I made it by lying a slice of lemon on the photographic paper and because the lemon's quite transparent, it let through lots of light. So try experimenting with different transparent things around the house. There are lots of details on making secret photographs on the Big Bang website. <laughs> Meet Peter Roger, the original geek. He was fascinated by words. Oh, what a damp day. No, not damp. Soggy. Roger was a doctor and a scientist. He also wrote a book, Roger's Thesaurus. It lists words with similar meanings. Oh, marvellous. I find the world an extraordinary place. Wonderful. Glorious. Roger spent lots of time watching the world and noticing things. And that was what gave him his big idea. Oh, uh -oh, young urchin! What a cabbage, mister! <laughs>
Uh, no, but uh, here's two florins. Will you push your cart up and down along this fence? Lummy, Governor. How long for? Why, until I say stop, impudent girl. Ooh! Roger had spotted something odd about the spokes of a cartwheel. When the wheel rolled behind a fence, the spokes looked curved rather than straight. Roger studied the illusion over and over and over again and made lots of notes. Eventually, two things happened. First, he came up with an explanation and then... Faff this for a lock! The urchin went off to sell her cabbages, but Roger had seen enough. He reckoned it was all to do with the way the fence posts interrupted his view of the wheel. When the wheel disappeared behind a post, his eye kept a blurred after image of the spokes. Then, when his brain joined those images together, it ended up looking like a wheel with curved spokes. He decided it was like watching a very bright object as it moves very quickly, like this. Your eye is retaining an after image of this object so you can see a circle of light. It's an effect called persistence of vision. Ah, persistence of vision. An optical illusion. A trick of the light. Then he forgot all about it and went back to writing his book of words. Volume. But a lot of other people were very interested in his big idea. People started to invent toys like this Zoe trope. It's got slits along it, like the gaps in the fence, and a series of pictures around the inside. Oh, how enthralling. Fascinating. Captivating. And when people tried doing it with photographs, they invented the cinema. And when they tried doing it with electronic pictures, they invented this. Television. Oh, fantastical. Unimaginable. Inconceivable. But you weren't exactly right. Oh? When you see a sequence of images, your brain simply joins them together. The after images Roger thought were so crucial don't matter at all. But he didn't care. I've completed my book. I've collected all the words in the English language. That's uh, cromungulous news. Cromungulous? We haven't got that one. Oh, how vexatious, how bothersome, how annoying, how frustrating. Oh. How are you getting on with Violet's puzzle? The challenge is this, to get the juice out of that tumbler into this bowl, but you can't touch the glass and you can't move the glass, but you can use this serviette, apparently. Any ideas? I think I've got a solution. If you take the serviette, I'm really proud of this, it's clever, right? <laughs> and soak up as much juice as you can, right? You can then squeeze it out into the bowl. Except that that serviette is going to fall apart before you get to the end of the juice. Yeah, it's not going to work, is so, it? This is what you do. You get your serviette and you roll it up and then twist it around like this. Uh -huh. And then put one end in the juice and the other end in the bowl. So what happens? Well, it'll just filter through. And uh, how long is this going to take, Violet Berlin? Oh, about a week. There you go. I don't believe it. That tissue's actually soaked up all that juice and dribbled it into that bowl there. That might not have been very fast, but it was a tremendous puzzle. Well done, Violet Thank Berlin. you very much. If you like that puzzle, there are plenty more on the website. As well as details of everything that you've seen in today's show. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on... The, the Big, Big Bang! Bang. Do you do? In the next Big Bang, make these explosive depth charges with baking powder. And find out why we're doing an experiment with a brass band and a steam train. Plus, make these groovy eye-bending cards.